So hello to the second part of the tutorial where we are going to have our um, uh, protein bloom by using geometry nodes. We are going to start out from the same scene that I uh, created previously. So uh, I'm going to keep all the styling that I had. So if you would like to have the styling done as I have it here, uh, please go to that part in the previous tutorial. But I'm going to delete um, the emitter system that we used here. So we are left now with the bare uh, protein and with the two objects that we need. So in my case, I have like the flower and also the flower with a couple of branches. And uh, just a heads up, if you have not um, imported proteins before, there are tutorials on how to do that on my channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So if you would like to jump to that, um, go ahead, watch some of them. Then you know how to import um, the protein structure from, for example, uh, Chimera, from Bimol, from Yasara and so on and so forth. You can also use an add on for that, which is called um, molecular notes. I'm also going to leave the link to that in the description and also link a couple of tutorials on how to get started with molecular notes so that you also know on how to use that. But for now, we are going to use a structure that I actually imported. I think I imported it from Yasara. Good. So we are going to do the tutorial in a bit of a lazy way, to be honest, because I'm using a geometry node tree that I used previously on a different tutorial, and that was the cover design tutorial. Um, if you are interested in that, I'm also going to link it because underneath that tutorial, there's also a link to the file um, and we are going to import the node from that file. So to do that, you just go to file, append, and then you navigate to where that file is located that you downloaded. Go to the file folder that is called uh, note tree. And then there is one uh, note that is called geometry notes. And then you just say append. And what you get is two objects that are imported. One is called uh, the sphere and the other one is called icosphere 0.2 in my case. Um, the sphere here is the object that controls where your objects are emitted and the icosphere was the object that was emitted uh, with the geometry nodes tree. So this is something we can delete and this is what we are going to keep. Uh, to be more precise, I'm going to enter uh, the geometry nodes menu. So select your, um, the, the protein and go into geometry nodes. There are no nodes that are shown here. For that, uh, you just click on new and then you go into the drop down menu that you he have here and select geometry nodes the first one without any number if you haven't uh, like added any node trees before and what you get is uh, the node tree from the previous tutorial and um, what we need to do now and you also see what happens so if i go into the rendered view uh, for that tutorial we had some sort of crystals being emitted on the on the surface of a protein but now, of course, we would like to substitute those crystals with our flowers. And that is really easy to do. So we just need to substitute one node. And for that, we are just going to drag and drop the pebbles or the, the flower uh, that we had and plug that node into here. So now seemingly nothing happened. So I'm also going to delete the icosphere and I'm also going to delete delete the icosphere from my menu to avoid confusion. So seemingly nothing happened, but if I zoom in, and I'm also going to go into the solid mode, if I zoom in, you see there are tiny flowers that appear here. And also if I move my icosphere, those flowers appear and disappear. And that's exactly what we would like to have. Of course, we would like to have them a bit larger. So first thing, I'm going to control the size. You can do that in two different ways. So you can either go right to the flower that we have here and also scale that flower. But you see nothing happens because you need to apply the scale as well. So scale it up and then hit uh, control A and say apply scale. I'm not going to apply it. Well, I'm going to quickly apply it so that you see what's happening. So uh, now you see the flowers are uh, larger, but you would have to do that step all over and over again 
um, in order to find the perfect size, which can be a bit uh, yeah, nasty to do. So I'm just going to go back to have the, the previous size again. You can also control the size via your geometry notes tree. And this is probably the more dynamic and the easier way on how to do that. I'm going to zoom in a bit so that we see better what's happening here. So the size is uh, controllable via um, one note, which is uh, the note that is this one here. So the multiply note uh, after our uh, float curve. So if you go to uh, higher values, your bevels grow. And that's exactly what we would like to have. So if I go again back into um, the rendered view, we are a bit out of focus, as you can see. So I'm going to quickly fix that. So the focus area is actually a bit at the center of the protein. So now it's a bit easier to see. So you see now that uh, we have the flowers growing and they are larger. That's something uh, what we would like to have. Yeah, we have, would like to spread them wider on our protein as well. And quite conveniently, we can also control that with another node, which is the multiply node, which is before the float curve. And by just changing the value here, that's a bit, uh, yeah, a bit difficult to change. So we need to be uh, quite careful. Um, we can also change the, uh, how far the, the flowers are spread. So I'm going to 0 0.05. Let's see how that looks. So oh, could be uh, oops, other way around. Could be a bit 0 0.02 uh, larger. So now you see that uh, our flowers spread like nearly all over the complete protein, fading out uh, because we use the float curve here. And now if I move my my object, you see that the flowers basically follow my object. Then um, now, of course, you just need to tweak with those values and play a bit. So if you would like to have it larger, then you can uh, increase that value over there. So more flowers are spread. Uh, you can also go ahead and play with uh, other random values or other values that you have here. So for example, that controls the rotation of our objects. And if you would like to have them uh, rotate a bit differently, then of course you just play with that value. I'm going to keep that one as it is for now. And uh, if you would like to control those uh, properties, for example, how wide the flowers are spread with the object that you have in the center, you could also do that by enlarging and um, decreasing the size of the object. Um, that's a bit, yeah, unfortunate or it's a bit um, yeah, nasty to do when you have like a full object. Uh, you could use an empty for that or to make it a bit easier to see what you're doing. So in that case, as you can see, if I make it larger, it starts to cover parts of my structure and then I don't know what's going on in the center. To avoid that, you could also just hide parts of it. So the visibility, for example, if I uh, go get rid of everything and just in the viewport have it displayed as a wire, for example. So that is way easier and way more convenient to have. So now you can also play with the size of your object and have uh, the parameters influenced by that. The shape of your object is also uh, in charge of how um, yeah, that kind of system is controlled. So in that case, I would actually recommend having a longer shaped object. So I'm going to really stretch it um, to, to be as broad as the protein so that you can see so it goes completely through the protein. This way I can ensure that also the back and the front parts of the protein are affected. Animation of that is now uh, quite simple as you can imagine. So you can either animate uh, your object by just doing simple keyframes um, of the object's location. So for example, if I go to um, the normal, uh, the, the layout screen. So for example, if I keyframe my object, uh, wait a second, I think yeah, I still have some old settings here. So let's say if I would like to have a hundred frame animation and I keyframe the start of the object and then jump to the end of my animation, move my object to the other side of the protein, keyframe that again, 
then you have like a smooth like the the smooth animation of the flowers going over the protein for example but this is not only uh, that's not the only thing that you can keyframe i'm just going to delete those keyframes again and move my move that keyframe as well and move my object to the middle you can also keyframe your geometry nodes so for example um, the size that we have here or the uh, yeah it's in indirectly it's the size so you could go from if you would like to have a, a similar animation as we had uh, before in the first tutorial so the flowers just growing then you could keyframe that value from zero to the size that we have now so that would be an option as well if you would also have them uh, move a bit you could also uh, keyframe the random value that's what we did in the previous tutorial so at the end of the growing animation i wanted to have some sort of movement there so i keyframed the rotation in the emitter system you can also do that here for example so that's an option as well you can also keyframe the the multiply value that we have uh, had here you can also keyframe uh, the the density something I didn't mention at all so if you would like to have more or less flowers so we did not uh, play with that previously uh, so this is also an option that you can keyframe in that case so you can see you have a lot uh, more control over where your flowers are how large they are where they appear if they appear just in one spot or if they appear on all of the the structure so this is the huge advantage when using geometry nodes versus using um, the emitter system. Good. So I hope that tutorial was helpful as well and that you got some ideas on how to either make your protein bloom or have something else grow on your structure. So as you can see, you can easily substitute the objects that you have. Um, so I would say go ahead, play with that system, have fun with it. And um, if you make something very creative with it, don't forget uh, to tag me on Twitter if you post it there, because I really like seeing the outcome of all of those tutorials and your creative modifications that you do. With that, I would like to say thank you for watching and um, yeah, see you in the next tutorial. Bye.